What's going on guys, it's Chu here, bringing you a, another review on Obi-Wan Kenobi. And this episode, I gotta say, was honestly sad. Uh, and I just can't get over the fact that this one was just... It's more of a setup episode. And I've said that before about, you know, animes and whatnot. But this one was a good setup episode. Uh, for what was to come. I'm a little disappointed, I'm not gonna lie, with where I thought this was headed, especially with the name drop of Quinlan Voss in the last episode. I personally thought we were going to have him show up. Uh, but still a possibility, we don't know. But overall, this episode wasn't bad, but it wasn't the best. To me, episode 3 still stands as the best so far. But we start this episode off with Kenobi being taken to Jim Beeb, and we have him in the back to tank. I feel like now Obi-Wan has graduated to a level of back to tank because now we have other greats such as Hayden or Vader, uh, Luke, and we've had Boba Fett uh, in the back to tank, and now it is Obi-Wan's turn to be in there. But one of the things that made this scene kind of intense was the fact that as we see obi-wan in the back to tank we also see vader as well as he is also in pain and we know that he's always in pain and i was very surprised that they showed us that i guess it's to show the connection that they still share uh, obviously not as anakin but this connection as vader and obi-wan as rivals as i guess you can say but after he gets out pretty early out of the back to tank we actually see him walking around we see O'Shea Jackson's character and I thought this was going to be Quinlan he just turns out to be a regular person who actually had a wife who was a Jedi who was hunted down by the Inquisitors really sad to see that you know uh, I'm guessing it was a random Jedi uh, who was killed and while they're getting prepared to head out because Obi-Wan is wanting to go now He's ready to head out. No one wants to volunteer. Uh, we actually see Tala saying, I'll go with him. And really, it was a mission between the both of them. Like, just two people we being able to get this. And I gotta give Tala credit. She was, an, like, her acting here was outstanding. Like, having her go, basically, you know, just diving right into it. She's like, you're not part of the sector. We see that how the lead security just questions her. And he's like, I have classified information. You know what that means. I have to get through right now. And you will address me as sir. And it's just like, all right. And so she gets through. She has a little bit of opposition. Kills that person. Uh, and while all that's happening, Obi-Wan is under going underwater. And we see him kind of reminiscent of episode one working through the water to get inside he takes down a stormtrooper and he gets in and i love it like it just made me feel like episode four but we also see him making some really grim discoveries where he sees other jedis who are basically dead and encapsulated in these like weird uh, i don't even know what you want to call it in these little weird spaces where we see just different Jedis among them, one of them being Ahsoka's young master back in the day. And that was just sad. I, I, even a youngling who was still wearing the outfit from when he was trained really just made me sad. But all this, while this is happening, we actually have um, Reva and Leia being in the same room and Reva interrogating uh, Leia, wanting to know about the path she literally knows nothing. Uh, she refuses, basically, to give in her any information that she knows where where Kenobi could actually be at. Uh, luckily, you know, she doesn't reveal anything uh, throughout the entire time. Reva basically confirms to us that she was a youngling when all of this happened. And she turned to the dark side. I, we're going to have kind of like what we had the situation in Jedi Survivor where we had that other Inquisitor, which I would have hoped we would have seen her in maybe live action. I thought that would have been great. You know, we only see like three Inquisitors. There was so many more. I don't know why we're not seeing those as well. And the Grand Inquisitor is basically out of the picture at this point. So I'm not quite sure as to why we don't see him. But Reva even tries to mind like probe her and doesn't work. You know, she's like, is this a staring contest? It's like Leia is, has been mentally strong forever like 
since she was a child and I love that and so luckily she does get saved though because she was gonna die <laughs> essentially by Reva's hand we see Tala giving her his information basically false information to kind of serve as a distraction uh, we have Obi-Wan going through slicing down some stormtroopers and then making his way into saving uh, Leia we then have uh, Reva um, basically setting off the alarms and upsetting everyone to the point to where they escape uh, luckily they do escape Vader shows up and he actually nearly chokes the life out of her but she basically saves herself by revealing that she actually put a tracker in Lola and as you guys can remember Lola was basically stopped by Reva while the interrogation was happening and she basically has changed Lola to a servant of the Empire, unfortunately. Uh, but the episode ends. We see how they lose one of their own, uh, Wade. And we actually have this sweet little moment between them all where they're trying to console each other. And we have Obi-Wan holding Leia's hand. Not a bad episode. Wish it was a little stronger, but we shall see for the next one. Catch you later.